With text data, it is often important to remove unnecessary parts. For example, you could have a data set that refers to International Business Machines Corporation, which is IBM, but most people don't know its full name, but rather just the abbreviation. So if you want to use the data that uses this official full name, then you will have to clean it up if you want to make, a, say, a table out of this to communicate stuff from your data set to people from the outside. So this is why it helps to know functions that clean up text. Thankfully, the tidyverse has the string R package, which helps you to clean up text. And in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of functions that help you do just that. So let's dive in. In this quarter file, I've already included a code chunk that does a couple of things. First up, it loads the tidyverse and the GT package, and it downloads a data set from the tidy Tuesday challenge. If you execute this, then you can see that this data set contains a translation of stock symbols to company name. And what I've then done in the rest of this code chunk is to pass this to GT. This will give us a table like this. And then I have added a header so that I have a title and subtitle. And I've also made the column labels a little bit nicer. And with that, we have a table that shows you the translation of stock symbol to company name. This is really not the point of this video. So this is why I went through this quite quickly. But what the point of this video is, is making text look nicer or rather removing unnecessary things. For example, if you look at this table, you will find this ink dot or amazon.com. A lot of these things are a bit superfluous. For starters, I really don't refer to IBM as International Business Machines Corporations and probably no one does. So this is why it might be good to just use the common name inside of this table, depending on what your audience is. Similarly, I never say amazon.com. I talk about Amazon. All of these things are just the stuff that is inside of this data set. If you look at the tibble, then you see that these are just the things that we have inside of the data. So this is why we need to figure out how to clean up this company column. And when we do, then we can simply pass the new clean data set to the same GT table. And then we have a bit of a better table because people can probably read it better or understand at least which companies are meant. So this is the goal for our video today. Let's start on that by having a look at the data set again. And then also we can minimize this window here because we need to work on the data here inside of the console. The first thing we might want to remove is all of the stuff like ink dot and corporation. And the way this could work is to take this data set and pass it to mutate where we override the company column by using string remove all on this company column. And string remove all needs a pattern or a string that it is supposed to remove from the company column. And here we simply say use ink dot or this is what this vertical line does for the word corporation. And if we do that, then we get the right results. We have removed all of the ink dots, but we have to be careful here. Really, this dot here is not what it seems. And to prove that to you, let me just use string remove all on a word called incorporation. Or we could even write Apple Incorporation. So instead of Apple Inc., we use Apple Incorporation. And again, we tell it to remove the word ink followed by a point. And if we do that, we would guess if this works like we assumed it did, we would think that, okay, right now we just get this part here back because there is no ink dot in there. But let's have a look what we actually get back. You can see here that it not only removed the ink, it also removed the O. And the reason for that is that inside of string remove all, inside of the pattern argument, you use what is called regular expressions. It is kind of a language in itself in which you can look for patterns like ink, but also can say stuff like, please string remove all, look for patterns like ink followed by anything. And this is what this dot does. It will now look for pattern that are ink and then anything, another character, and it will remove that. And what we've put in here fits the bill because ink O as an incorporation follows this pattern. It's ink followed by something, namely an O. So this is why it removes this incorporation. But really, this isn't what we wanted to do in this case here, right? We wanted to remove the ink followed by a point just like it is printed in here. So this is why in regular expressions, you have to escape this. What this means is that you put in backslash in front of this to tell the regular expression, hey, this is not the special symbol that stands for anything. This is really just the point like we mean it here, like we write it here. But if we execute this, then we get an error because R will now say this thing here, this backslash point, is an unrecognized escape in character string. 
And the reason why this is happening is that R uses the backslash as a way to escape things too, as a way to say this has special meaning or this has not the usual meaning. But when R sees this code here, it thinks, okay, I don't know what this backslash point is supposed to mean. Regular expressions know what this means. But the first stage is going through R and then it goes to the regular expression, which again, you can think of as a language in itself. So this is why you have to escape the escape backslash and put another escape in front of it to tell R this backslash is a regular backslash just like we wanted to. And then the code works. Now that we have that covered, let us work on the next thing. You may notice that there are white spaces at the end of the words now. Because the thing is, in our previous data set, we have only removed these parts here, but this still leaves the white space in front of it. There are two ways to remove this. One, you could just put in a white space in front of ink and in front of corporation, and this would work. But what I like to do is to use a different function for these kind of things, because I don't want to make my regular expression that I have in here unnecessarily complicated because it's really easy to lose track of what's going on. So instead, let us stick with this one here, but replace once that is through, replace the company column again. So we overwrite it again, but this time we use the str trim function on the company column, and then this will get rid of all excessive white space at the beginning or the end of a string. The nice thing about this approach of continuously overwriting the same column is that you can take things one step at a time. You don't have to stick in all of the information, all of the patterns into one big regular expression. You can do things one by one. So really, let's just do the same thing again. And before the str trim call, let's throw in another string remove all call. And we have str trim at the end to make sure that we always remove all the excessive white space. Next, let us remove all of the things like .com, these commas here, systems and platforms. And also there are still a couple of commas here that we should remove. Let me show you the regular expression that does this. I will replace this here now. But once this is in there and you see that this works, let me just go through this one by one. Okay, so this is the regular expression. And if I execute this, I remove all of the things. So you know that this does the trick. So let's untangle this inside of a new code chunk. So one thing you would probably have no problem with is this part here. This part is just like the thing that we have done before. We get rid of the .com or the systems or the platforms, right? We just have to make sure that the point here, the dot is escaped again because we want to literally get rid of dot com. And once we remove that, we get rid of all of the unnecessary words. But now the commas are still in there. We could try to put in a comma after the dot com, after the systems and after the platforms. That might work, but is really just too much code. So instead, what we can do is to put in a grouping. Right now, the code still works the same. I have re-executed it and you can see that the output is the same. Right now, the regular expression here says there is a part coming, a group, and, and what constitutes a group is either the word platforms, the word systems, or the word .com. And now we also want to remove all of the commas that come after this. So if we do that, we got rid of a couple of commas. For example, there is amazon.com is gone now, but there is still Salesforce, Netflix, comma, and Tesla, comma. And the reason why it didn't work on these words is because we didn't remove any of the groups here. Really, it didn't say .com systems or platforms inside of Cisco or for Meta or for Tesla or for Netflix. Actually, it said that for Meta, this is why it worked, but it didn't say that for Netflix and Tesla. Okay, so this is why we have those commas still here. So right now, commas are only removed if they are preceded by one of the three words we are looking for, by the one group we say comes inside of our pattern. So we want to make this group kind of optional. And the way to do that in regular expression is to put in a question mark after a group. And if you do that, now you get rid of all of the commas because it will get rid of the commas regardless of whether the comma is preceded by the group or not. And with that, we have successfully removed all of the annoying parts of the word. Now, all that's left to do is to translate international business machines to IBM. And the way we could do that is to target the company column again, and this time target it using the string replace all function that is supposed to replace stuff. The first argument is the column where we get the data from. In this case, it is the company column again. And now we're looking for things to replace. In this case, we want to replace international business machines. So we're looking for this text here. And this part is simply replaced by IBM. 
And if we execute this, we can see that we have cleaned up our data set quite nicely and we have IBM in here now. And with that, we could simply take our code from before, our GT code, and put this at the end of this. And then we get a nicely formatted table. And with that, we have learned how to do a little bit of text cleaning by removing unnecessary words or replacing them with something else. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. As always, you can find the code that I have shown you in this video in the corresponding blog post. A link to that is put into the description of this video. Now enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time.